To people outside the sport, and even to most fans, Ferrari is synonymous with F1. The iconic prancing horse and Ferrari's red are as much a symbol of the sport as Michael Schumacher, the checkered flag and the champagne being sprayed on the podium. But why has it been over a decade since Ferrari is running for the championship, and why can't they win one now? To even the most casual viewers, Ferrari really doesn't need an introduction, but let's go over some key points anyway. Ferrari is the oldest team on the grid, having entered 1,044 races since debuting in 1950. They are also the most successful team. During their 72 years in the sport, they have won 15 drivers' championships, 16 constructor championships, and not to mention 240 race wins, 784 podiums, 238 pole positions, and 258 fastest laps. But saying that, history doesn't have much to do with current day, as second place is Williams with the most wins. And it's safe to say, they're struggling at the moment too. In addition to their racing success, they are also one of a few teams with their own engine, and they have also supplied engines to several other teams, including current Alfa Romeo and Haas. But despite their historic success, it's been a hot minute since Ferrari last won a championship. Their last driver's champion was Kimi Raikkonen in 2007, and they last won the Constructors' Championship in 2008. But through the 2010s, they never finished lower than 4th in the Constructors' Championship and have been a regular fixture on the podium. And along with Mercedes and Red Bull, they are making up the big three within the sport. However, their 2020s didn't start very well as they actually finished six after Mercedes, Red Bull, McLaren, Racing Point, and Renault. And that kind of continued into 2021. They did come third overall, but they were 200 points behind Red Bull, which is a considerable amount. And they seem to be occupying this weird space as the best of the middle teams. However, 2022 Ferrari seems a lot better and they're staying pretty stable within the second place, even if they are collecting DNS faster than Lewis Hamilton collects driver records. But those DNFs really shouldn't be happening. At the beginning of the season, 2022 surely seemed to be the start of Ferrari's redemption arc, perfect for the plot of an F1 movie within the next 10 years. All of this buzz started with the preseason testing, when Ferrari showed unexpected speed and reliability in Bahrain. Machine-wise, the F175 seemed to be Ferrari's first truly competitive offering in recent years, especially after the pretty decent SF21 and the toy car that was the SF1000. It showed that it could easily outcorner the Red Bull's RB18, but it didn't have the best start when coming onto straights. Ferrari though have been continuously improving the car to catch up with Red Bull, but in doing so, they left Mercedes and the rest of the teams in the dust. It is without doubt one of the fastest cars on the current grid. And besides the car, they have one other ace up their sleeve, or more accurately two aces. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. Charles Leclerc is in his fourth season with the team and Carlos Sainz in his second. The Ferrari drivers know how things work. Neither has to get used to the new team this year, neither are rookies in any sense of the word, and both are ready to give it their all. Leclerc is obviously Ferrari's star driver because he's been in the team for the longest and he's the one who's currently going after the championship. Or he would be if Ferrari would let him, but more on that later. But he's currently second in the standings, but he's also a massive 63 points behind Verstappen. Leclerc had a stellar start to the season, finishing first, second and first within the first three rounds, looking every bit like a worthy challenger to Verstappen's title. And while sure he had some bad luck at the start, Red Bull really decided they wanted to give him a helping hand. They did this by giving Verstappen a pretty un-Red Bull-like car, so Leclerc was free to take the lead in the Drivers' Championship early into the season, a lead that he managed to maintain until the sixth round in Spain, at which point Red Bull had managed to figure some of their stuff out and Verstappen was three races into his sixth podium streak. And although he's a support driver to Leclerc, Carlos Sainz is not far behind, Currently 5th in the standings with a much more manageable 17 points behind Checo Perez in 3rd. And Sainz has actually achieved more podiums this season than his teammate. 6 to Leclerc's 5. And his recent recovery drive from P19 to 5th in France made him drive of the day, week and the month. So to recap, Ferrari has the car and the drivers to win the championship, so why aren't they? Well, the answer of course is the third part. Strategy. Or lack there of it. An expensive camera won't make an amateur a better photographer, and an exquisitely crafted guitar won't make your rendition of Wonderwall sound any better. A talented artist can create masterpieces with the cheapest ballpoint pen. The point is that it's not really the tools, but how you use them. And Ferrari having the F175 with the Claren signs in it is very much like giving a set of expensive oil paints to a toddler. There will be a mess, tears, and someone will end up looking like a clown. You can have three guesses as to who to clown in this scenario. Actually, hell, you don't even need three. You can have one. And hint, it's the entire team. 
Ferrari have dropped the ball with strategy many times this season, but the best, or in this case the worst example, comes from their interesting take on strategy from Monaco. Imagine for a moment that you're Charles Leclerc, and you've had a stellar performance in qualification that has landed you on pole at your home race. Your teammate Sainz is starting from P2, and there is no reason why you shouldn't simply sail to a 1-2 finish. After all, it is Monaco. Don't crash, and you pretty much can't be overtaken. You're also second in the championship, but it's okay. You'll make up the six-point difference to Verstappen, no problem. Nothing can rain on your parade. Well, except rain. Oh, and also the Ferrari team strategy. You know it's bad when your head of strategy has to issue an explanation for the mess that was Ferrari in Monaco 2022. According to him, which I can't pronounce his name, things started to go pear-shaped when Ferrari tried to read a timing sheet, miscalculating entirely if they could cover Perez. But had that been their only blunder, maybe the race would have been salvaged. Alas, no. In what will definitely go down in F1 history as one of the worst pit stop blunders ever, Ferrari managed to kind of accidentally do a double pit stop. This is what the Ferrari strategist said. The gap in between our car was five seconds. It was tight for a double stop. A comfortable double stop is done with six seconds in between the cars, but we thought five and a half seconds might be enough. As the cars got closer and closer to pit entry, the gap was narrowed, and at the pit entry, the gap was only three and a half seconds. We made a last second attempt to try and tell Charles to stay out, but it was too late. He had already veered into the pit lane. In this double stop, Charles lost two seconds. This was crucial. Why? This allowed Verstappen to come out ahead of Charles a lap later. And as a result of this, Perez took home the win, for which he probably should have sent the Ferrari strategy team a fruit basket or at least some champagne. Sainz came second, Verstappen third, and Leclerc limped home in fourth, when he really, really should have won. But surely things can't get worse than that, and surely Ferrari had a good hard look at themselves and sorted their stuff out after Monaco. Yeah, no. For Charles Leclerc, Monaco was just the beginning of a waking nightmare. Imagine again that you're Leclerc, this time P3 at Silverstone. Sainz is ahead of you in P1, but it's a promising race for both of you if you can just overtake Verstappen. You could be on your way to a 1-2 finish. But you know what's coming, so let's cut to the chase. Ocon is out on lap 39, stopping the track, bringing out the safety car, and the perfect opportunity for everyone to pit, which almost everyone did, except of course Leclerc. Maybe Ferrari had a plan, or maybe Ferrari's just terrified of double pitting after Monaco, so they refuse to double stack the drivers, only pitting Sainz. Once the race starts up again, Sainz is free to breeze past Leclerc, now on new tyres. As Matteo Bonotto explains, in our case we have the two cars and there wasn't a sufficient enough gap to stop both of them because the second would have lost time at the pit stop and fallen back. And I'm all for learning from your mistakes, but whoever's doing the maths in the Ferrari garage must be exceptionally bad at it because they managed to use the correct formula and get the wrong answer. And so once again, it's a win for Sainz with Perez and Hamilton completing the podium and Leclerc again in fourth. And then France happened. Leclerc was on pole again, but this time he kind of took himself out. Maybe that was a preventative measure to stop Ferrari from doing it for him later in the race. As they say, don't let anyone else ruin your day. It's your day. Ruin it yourself. So with Leclerc out and that heartbroken scream no, Ferrari were free to focus on signs and maybe with only one driver on the track, they could manage to make good choices. But it's Ferrari, so no. Sainz was having a good race. He started at the back of the grid and managed to fight his way all the way to the front. He was in the middle of overtaking Perez on the final corner when the call came into box. Sainz's answer of not now is a testament to either his common sense or his big cojones, or possibly both. But at this point, Ferrari should really just fire the strategy guys and replace him with Sainz. Sainz did end up pitting on the next lap, which cost him precious seconds and left him to finish the race in fifth. Sainz has defended the strategy saying, I think the team is doing a very good job on strategy this year. Every time there's a tricky moment on strategy, we are discussing things, but we are not a disaster like people seem to say we are. We like to discuss things, we are open about them. Sure Carlos, whatever you need to tell yourself to sleep at night. And jokes aside, I do agree with Ferrari for this race. He was on worn tyres, he had 10 laps left. If he crashed and got zero points, so much worse than just settling for fifth. But despite that, Ferrari's strategic blunders are perfect meme fodder for the summer break that's about to start. And they would be quite funny if they genuinely just weren't so devastating at times. Driver error or mechanical issues messing up a race are no fun, but on some level, they are much easier to stomach than endless strategic fails or missed chances from the pit wall. After the disastrous French Grand Prix, everyone's favourite team boss, Bonotto, was asked whether Ferrari's only chance at a championship now relied on Red Bull having a streak of bad luck, to which Bonotto, in his infinite wisdom, replied, 
I don't know, because I'm not counting points. If you would have asked me before this race what the gap to Red Bull or Max, I couldn't answer to you because I'm not looking. What we are focused on is trying to go to each single race and get the maximum result from it. It didn't happen here in Paul Ricard, but I think we are already focused on Hungary and going there for a 1-2. Well, Bonotto might want to start counting points because Leclerc is now 63 points behind Verstappen. Getting a 1-2 in Hungary might go some way to lessening the gap, but for it to really count, Verstappen should also have a bit of bad luck that leaves him out of the points. At this point in the season, it's a given that Ferrari has to either give it their all every single race to have a shot at the championship. But like Bonotto, I'm an optimist, and even with Ferrari's current track record, there is no reason why they shouldn't be able to bridge the gap and give Leclerc a fighting chance. With 10 races to go, nothing is decided yet, and while Red Bull's bad luck is an uncomfortably important variable in this equation, it's important for a reason. One break issue here or there can swing the points and standings in Ferrari's favour. Most teams have had some sort of car trouble this season, including Red Bull as I mentioned earlier, so anything could happen. Of course, Ferrari can't just cross their fingers though, hoping for another team to have a malfunction. It would raise some serious suspicions if they did. What they really need to do is work on their car and, more importantly, their strategy. With the French blunder fresh on their minds, Ferrari will probably be very mindful of their strategy in Hungary. The upcoming summer break should also give the team some time to think of things. What Ferrari needs to realise is that Leclerc is their shot at a driver's championship and they need to act accordingly. I'm a strong advocate for letting racers race, even if they are in the same team, but no winning team has ever been shy about using team orders to ensure a win for the driver who has more to gain. Of course, no one really wants to see a Hamilton Bottas situation, but Ferrari should take their summer break to figure out their priorities, and they should never try to double pit stop ever again, just for literally everyone's safety. Ferrari, Leclerc and Sainz aren't the only ones who have something to gain from Ferrari learning to apply race strategy effectively. Yes, the team has a potential championship after 15 years, and Leclerc might be looking at his first World Drivers' Championship, but the real winner would be the fans. Leclerc is currently the only driver with half a chance of challenging Verstappen's title, and keeping the fight on the front of the grid interesting. If Ferrari can give him the strategy befitting of a title contender, we are in for a real treat during the second half of this season. But with that being said, let me know what you think. Do you agree with my opinion? Am I completely wrong? Am I completely right? Let me know in the comments down below and leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. It helps out massively. But with that said, I will see you next time.